our shop? That's the number one question people ask of me. I'll get to that in a moment. Looking back, I would say that my childhood was average. My mom stayed home with me, my sister, my brothers, while my dad went to work. I remember walking home from high school, two miles, to get home and see my mom sitting on the sofa, folding laundry, and watching her favorite soap opera. Things were simple then. We didn't participate in sports, and there weren't many outside activities. Growing up with a mom at home was my normal. I expected that to be the way my life would go. I was encouraged to go to college. I graduated with a degree in marketing. I got married. I worked a few years. We bought our first home. It was a fixer-upper. We spent months pulling up orange carpet, pulling brown cork from the wall, and painting the house inside and out. It was June of 1988, my first son was born. I love being a mom. I was very fortunate, we got to stay, I got to stay home with my kids, and we eventually had four more children. That's not to say that the husband and I, there were a few bumps on the road. In fact, there were some major potholes. When my youngest daughter entered first grade, the marriage was over. It was a tough but necessary decision. I went from full-time motherhood to full-time motherhood and a full-time job. I went back to work while raising five kids, pretty much by myself. Imagine five kids sitting around the dinner table doing homework. There were essays and projects to help with. I couldn't have done this without the help of my mom, my sister, and a few very good friends. I made an effort to attend every parent and sporting event for each of my kids. That totaled 12 years. 12 years of sitting on those Friday night lights, sitting on those bleachers, rooting for my football players and cheerleaders. It was November of 2013 when I sat through my last game. I was graduating from the sideline. <laughs> I think I deserve an award for that. So going back to work, I hopped job to job. These weren't careers, they were just jobs. There was no potential and no future. There I was encouraging my kids to reach for their dreams and I couldn't even find mine. Work was just a way to pay the bills. Each job was a new routine with a new set of rules. Each employer was more annoying than the one before. <laughs> These men who own small businesses were really tough on me as the only employee. We've all had those challenging moments in the workplace. I have one too. May of 2006, I was wor working for a flooring contractor. I spent most of my days in the two-room office, just me and the carpet squares. One day, I was checking on the delivery of carpet. He marched across the room and ripped the phone out of my hand. How did she order that carpet? When the, vo when the voice on the other end confirmed I had ordered it correctly, he handed the phone back to me without an apology. He had been telling me how to order the carpet, and he didn't even trust me to make that phone call. I remember thinking then that if this jerk could run a small business and make money, then so could I. It was at that time that I started thinking, what, what should I do? What was I doing? Why was I hopping job to job? What should I be doing? I eventually took some classes through a small business development center and SCORE and I learned some business basics. So I started thinking, what type of business would be good for me? What opportunity should I look for? I found and was hired at a car dealership. I loved this job. I worked with other women. We were on the phones. They had come in to look at a new car. Hey, do you want to come back and see this car? Well, how about that car? We had a great tradition of enjoying iced coffees when we worked our every other Saturday shifts. But working every other weekend was really hard on my youngest daughter. The only place to go at that job was into car sales, and that's the last thing I wanted to do. So I started looking again. I found and was hired at an independent auto repair shop. Even though I was the only female, I liked this job. The coworkers were fun. The days passed quickly. We had a lot of fun. The shop offered necessary services that customers needed to fix and to maintain their car. These customers came in once, twice, maybe three times a year, and they became friends. After that, I started researching the automotive industry. 
I found that there were very few women who stood out in auto repair across the country. It was, and still is, a very male-dominated industry. But research showed that women make up about half of the auto repair service buyers. I liked that. I thought, here is my opportunity. Once I decided maybe I should buy an auto repair stop, shop, I took steps, even though I had no idea how I was going to buy this business. Others did share their fears and doubts. You don't have money. You don't have any experience. While that was true, I didn't focus on the bad what ifs. I focused on only the good what ifs, and that kept me going. What if? I did what anyone does when they want to buy a business. I started driving around and looking at shops. I spent hours in the car, looking here and there, driving all over the county. One day, I turned the corner, and there was it. There it was, an auto shop, my auto repair shop. It was late October of 2012. I decided to leave. I made an offer. I was so nervous. I was a nervous wreck. I didn't know. I, I went ahead and pulled the offer. I just had to think. But I knew I had no other option. So I quickly pulled. I, I, I had no other option, so I offered again. It was maybe five to seven days later. I heard the offer was accepted. And now the hard part. I had to scrape together $5,000. There was some owner carry back and some creative financing, but I pulled it off. There were a lot of papers to sign. I felt like I was signing my life away. January 28th of 2013, the phone rang. The voice on the other end said, the shop is yours. I did it. I bought an auto repair shop. What was I thinking? <laughs> The previous owner stayed with me for several months to train me. After that, I was on my own. I would have to build this business and build it big. I would have to market to customers, cut expenses, um, and get others to, to know that I was there. I decided I really had to focus in my neighborhood. I would have to go out and do what some people dread. I would have to cold call. As I went out in the neighborhood, I was scared, but no one really yelled at me, and everyone was pretty friendly. It got easier as I developed better marketing materials that better represented me and my company. I liked what I was presenting, and I knew no other shop was doing this either. I was the new girl on the block and proud of it. The first, um, the first few doors were scary. One day, I walked down the hall and I met these two women. I met these two amazing women. These women instantly knew how I felt. They made me feel like a success, even when I didn't feel that of, my, of myself. I share this story because I would not have met these women without knocking on that door that day. What amazes me more is that these women have introduced me to another great opportunity. You really know, you never know where one door will lead. Looking back, I've always encouraged my kids to be their own success stories. To our medical school, one has started a, a, a career in the telecom industry, and he's a new dad. One is going to be, he's a junior in college, wants to be a physicist. And my daughter, she's transferring in the fall to pursue a degree in psychology. This August, ends the final chapter with a child at home. I will officially be an empty nester. Looking, <laughs> looking back and remembering the hard times, yet watching my kids succeed, reminds me that I've done something right, and that is what I focus on. So why an auto repair shop? Let me share three quick stories with you. My older son, away at medical school, calls me. His Mustang is overheating. Pull over, I tell him. He pulls over, but it's too late. The car needs a major repair. Um, we opted to sell that car, and he put him in something newer. My daughter, away at USC, calls and says, the oil light is on. Pull over, I tell her. <laughs> Take the car to the nearest shop. The nice shop puts in two quarts of oil without charging her anything. 
Recently, my youngest was driving my O2 Mini Cooper, my favorite with 200,000 miles on it. She sends me a photo with the car all the way into the red and says, is this bad? <laughs> of course it's bad, I said. Pull over. <laughs> I am on the road to where I want to go, but there is more road ahead. I want to educate women and young children, kids, especially my own, on the basics of car safety and reliability. I want to be that resource. I am currently developing a rebrand of my business. This has been the most challenging thing I've done. When someone in my family says they're proud of me, I actually feel proud of myself. I have worked so hard and put in so much effort that I am beginning to see that the hard work is paying off. When one of my family members says they're proud of me, it's been the best. Um, again, I want to be that resource for women in automotive. What is the vision for your road ahead? Put yourself in drive and step on the gas. Thank you.